telling you right now, like not, I'm, I got, I'm, I, I have you know, like renegades of funk going through my head yeah. now, wee, which, is, wee, wee, wee. which is good because yeah. it overtook for some reason I got out of the shower and I don't know what association my brain was making, but all of a sudden for almost an entire hour, the song rock me Amadeus was in my head. And <laughs> I'm like, I haven't listened to this song. Where is it coming from? Yeah. Um, but uh, luckily uh, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was looking at my, my very minimal notes. And then I you know saw the title renegades and I go, Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Now a different song is in there. <laughs> I have no problem with Rock Me on Medeus, but that's an odd one to get stuck in your head for some yeah. weird reason. I know I've heard that song, but I can't remember how it goes. I'm a day, I'm a day. I'm a day, I'm a day, I'm a day. But the thing, the thing that was stuck in my head is this fucking portion in the middle of the of the album version of the song. Because I had I had that album when I was a kid. Yeah. And in the middle, there's just this weird section where it's just these weird samples of him saying stuff. And they did that thing they used to do back in the eighties where they would repeat it really quick, rapidly. So yeah. it's like, he goes like, wunderbar, but, 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 but. <laughs> <laughs> and that part is all in my head. And I'm just like, yeah. dang it. Why? <laughs> anyway, it's uh, Falco. That's Austrian rock singer Falco. Hmm. I got. I don't know what, how that happened. I got into Falco. I heard that song and got that album. And I owned two other Falco albums when I was a kid. Damn. And he sings mostly in. Is it Austrian that they would speak in Austria, or is it German? Fuck, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever that. I think it's yeah. Austrian. So, but it's it, he rarely ever sang in English. And for some reason, that is that I got into Falco. Finds its way into your head. Yeah. Who the who the fuck knows? But I left that behind. Like that's not one I've ever come back to because <laughs> I've heard other Falco songs and I go, yeah, I get. I guess I understand why I like this as a kid. But now it's not doing anything for me at all. But <laughs> fair. Anyway, hi everyone. <laughs> that was the <laughs> welcome to Cranked and Ranked. That's a, that's. A, I love that we're doing that. But we're just yeah. Whatever. Ha- if I if we start having some sort of weird conversation, my brain just goes. That's that's the beginning of the episode now. I like that and, uh, pull open sort of thing. Yeah. Um, we're back and uh, we're ranking another band. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've, we, uh, we started off, you know, really strong with a, a Led Zeppelin ranking. Yeah. And, um, and now we're literally moving 20 years into the future, basically. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. From when Led Zeppelin started a little bit over 20 years away. Um, and, uh, we're going to be, uh, uh, ranking rage against the machine, which is four albums, three proper albums, Hmm. but one that I still consider it a rage against the machine album, but we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, Well, they, they, uh, they they definitely, they did that thing where if you do a covers album, you can go one of two routes. You can do them verbatim or you can completely, stylistically change them to the point where it's almost like your own song. Yeah. Which I, I I actually enjoy that when bands do that, whenever I hear a a cover version of a song, that's very much different, takes the idea of the song and sort of reinterprets it. I really like that because I don't want to hear a straight up cover and I absolutely don't want to hear a lounge cover or, (laughs) Oh my God. There's, there's this one, I don't know if it's a group or if it's just like a company that does these, but for, for it, it felt like for years, anytime I would like bring up some artist or album or song that I like, everyone would be like, Oh, have you heard the postmodern jukebox version of that song? Yeah. And I would just go, fuck you. No, <laughs> yeah. because yeah. it's never good. Like it's, it's really good. If you don't really like, good music if you want all your music to be stripped down to complete boredom then sure <laughs> but uh yeah. but yeah i've heard some be- i like and and some that i'm like yeah yeah i can't i can't i'm not into it at all i think it's mostly just because i got annoyed because people would constantly do that to me like oh you like slayer have you heard that 
Raining Blood banjo cover. I'm like, yeah. get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> no, I listen to the real Raining Blood because I'm not yeah. an idiot. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Started off with some hot takes. Some well, I mean, hard I, I, passes. Yeah. I've already I've already put up this big wall where I don't like that kind of thing. I don't like those videos where they're like, what if Alice in Chains wrote Inner Sandman? And I'm just like, fuck yourself. Get you know, find something real to do with your time. Hear me yeah. out. What if Alice in Chains did Toxic by Britney Spears? No. No, I saw I it works. I saw a guy do it recently, and it, it, it actually it kind of fucks. <laughs> no. Now mashups, if they're done really well, I love some mashups. But I'm just kind of a, I'm just kind of a curmudgeon when it comes to all those other things because I think it's. Just, but I, I've said this a lot because I have so much music going on in my life all the time: new music, old music, whatever. That yeah. all this other kind of faux bullshit, I just go look. I don't have time for that. Yeah, and I get that. and it, and so yeah, so I just don't. I mean, it's it has its place, and I think the place for that is people where music is kind of a a, a just like a hobby or just something they do when they're bored. And I'm yeah. like, cool, yeah, great, great. But the music is li li literally my life. My entire fucking life is just. There's music all the time, and if it's not playing, or I'm playing it, or I'm talking about it, then it there. Rock me, Amadeus is in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, we're doing Rage Against the Machine, and hell yeah. uh, long yeah, time and, uh, coming. Yeah, yeah. It's a we. I feel like this is a band. Well, we've talked about them because we did like a. Uh, I think a couple of year episodes where we talked about rage, at least one. I know we did 99. We talked about, uh, we definitely battle of Los them. Angeles. We definitely mentioned, mentioned them in the 92 one. I think we even mentioned them in the 96 one as well. So we've talked about them before, oh. to be fair, we've, we've probably talked about their entire discography, which is yeah. done an actual rage against the machine album. <laughs> yeah. So now we're, so now we're going to rank all of them, all four of them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so if, it's funny because I keep looking down at my notes. It's literally just four pieces of paper with album titles written on them. Wow. That's it. Fair. Because because I know these albums so well that mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, I, I can kind of just wing it because I don't really need to write down. I don't because usually my notes are like important things that I want to make sure I talk about. Like, make sure yeah. you mention this. Make sure, you know. Um, but now I'm just like, no, no, I'm I'm good. I'm good with this because I've been uh, a full on Rage Against the Machine fan since 1992. And mm. so we should we'll segue into that portion where we talk about where the band came into our lives. Uh, my my introduction to them was the uh, the cable access show that I talk about a lot that was called Raw Time in Austin, yep. Texas. And the. On Raw Time, they played the music video because there was a music video, or maybe it was live. All I know it was it was killing, killing in the name, and um, that wasn't getting played on MTV, obviously, because there's too many f bombs in it. Um, mm -hmm. And and I I had yet to see a Rage Against the Machine video on MTV. It hadn't I, I didn't know them yet, and so Killing in the Name was my introduction, and of course I as soon you know like like any fucking you know, what was I, 14 at that point? Any fucking 14-year-old kid hears that song, I'm, I'm buying that goddamn album yeah. tomorrow. And I did. I went and I bought their their debut album on cassette and um, played the fuck out of it. Like, I, not, I absolutely loved it. I loved that album so much that a couple years later when I started playing guitar, I learned the entire album minus, you know, the, the, the solos. Yeah, um, but I learned all the riffs and stuff for that whole album when I, I was learning did. how to play guitar. I did too. It's a yeah. good, it's a good beginner guitar riff collection. Well, not sure. not just not just that. It's it, you, it's easy to learn, but also I think it's a it's good for like learning to rhythm. Yeah, like keeping yeah. the rhythm going. And so, um, but yeah, so I've been a fan ever since. And uh, where where was your beginning with Rage? 
uh, my favorite thing to bring up on this show, GTA San Andreas. Nice. Ke- oh, yeah, the- yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Killing in the Name is on uh, the Radio X uh, station on yeah. that game. And it, it one of the things that irks me about every remaster they've done since of that game this song hasn't been in the soundtrack which is bullshit yeah and and here's here's my rant you can't tell me that the company that have made the biggest grossing media product of all time with gta 5 which they have milked dry for over 10 years now yeah right? granted we've got the trailer now for gta 6 so i'm not as antsy as i was before yeah. However, you can't tell me that they have not only remastered and re-released the games once, but twice, and still haven't reinstated the songs into the soundtrack where their licenses had expired after a certain amount of time. Yeah. When you bring in that much money, we're talking billions yearly, I believe. It's fucking crazy, or at least every few years. Yeah, they bring in a fuckload, and you can't tell me that they can't reinstate the licenses on a well, remaster that they call the definitive edition. You, well, do you think it's a money issue, or do you think it's Rage not wanting it to be used anymore? It's not. It's not only Rage. There's songs from all the stations across all styles that okay. just aren't present in the game so it's a, it is a licensing thing because i'm just trying to remember i don't hear a lot of rage against the machine and stuff anymore like there was a period of time where it was in video games it was in like the matrix and stuff like that yeah. but i'm trying to think in recent memory hearing any rage against the machine in anything and maybe they've because they seem like they've they kind of tightened up everything with their band and you know I, I, maybe they're just saying no to that one i don't know yeah i, I don't Who know uh, i just i just think if you're going to call a, a new version the definitive edition you should have I, all of the stuff that was there present and and then some you know yeah yeah I, I i agree with that you know what i was thinking i was actually thinking about this the other day because of because of you mm-hmm. that i because I saw the trailer for the new GTA, and I—I I, I mean, I'm not a gamer, but also it didn't—it didn't make me feel excited. Like I didn't want to go play that game. It just doesn't seem very cool, and I think because it seems a little samey. But it gave me an idea immediately because I thought of the game, and then I thought of you, and I go, "Why haven't they decided to go kind of a different route and do like a '90s?" british crime movie like snatch like a british crime movie in the 90s version where every, everybody's got the cockney accent you can't understand yeah. anything they're saying yeah. and it literally <laughs> takes place in london and it's, it's all foggy and you know what i'm saying it's funny you should say that because they actually did do that back on the ps1 there's uh oh they did there is a london gta but it's from when it was basically pac-man with a gun so oh. but you know it, so literally, it is literally it's just you pass by one of those red phone booths every once in a while yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's set in a, it's set in the 60s it's set in 60s london and the basically all of the little cut scenes that you would get are basically what you just described it's just like a really arcadey version but okay yeah they've, just, they've definitely stuck to the to the parodying of of america yeah um, well, and the iconic that, cities that totally that? To- it totally made me think of there's a, a guy on tiktok that i don't i haven't watched any of, other, of his other videos but he keeps posting these videos where he's doing impressions of jason statham in every movie he's in <laughs> and it's all like don't you know who i am i'm the mailman and it's all, <laughs> it's all just stuff like that and yeah. then and it's literally just him just you know uh, say yeah. do you know who i am i'm the gynecologist like it's just a <laughs> lot of, and then there's another one where it's just him going like the line he says in every movie was all right what's the job what's yeah. the job <laughs> and i'm like that's fucking great because that really is every jason statham movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> i remember it- seeing i remember seeing like this this parody back in the day where it was just like a piss take trailer for a jason statham movie and yeah. it was like 
I, ca I can't remember. My heart's been removed and I've got 60 minutes to find out where it is, hiding in this covert location in an underground base that I need to infiltrate, you know? <laughs> what was that movie called with, uh, where he had to keep his heart rate up or he would die or something? What was that? Oh, I can't remember. I saw the first one and it was really fun and weird. And I'm just like, that's fucking great. That's a good idea for a movie. Um, Isn't there like a really crazy mid to late nineties music video that's got him as a dancer in it? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know. I don't remember ever seeing Jason Statham prior to, I don't know, the late nineties, maybe. I, I don't really, but Jason Statham. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the beekeeper. <laughs> that's, but that's literally a movie i think he's in a movie called the beekeeper and in, yeah. in the trailer i think i think he says that don't you know who i am beekeeper. <laughs> anyway um all right well okay so 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 Ra rage was on gta yep and uh um, and did you immediately get into them from that pretty much yeah, yeah. I, I remember it, it's funny it, it it was one of those like destiny moments where right around the time of me getting into um like rock and metal because mm -hmm. of guitar hero uh i started going and listening to the rock stations in gta as well so that kind of happened simultaneously and then yeah. all of a sudden you know there's this song that's so groovy heavy has everything i could hope for and the dude's yelling, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me over the top of it. Yeah. You know, with just such conviction and, you know, pardon the pun, rage, that I just <laughs> thought to myself, I need to find out what this song is. Well, yeah. amazingly, later in the day, I had Kerrang! TV on, um, and the music video for Killing in the Name comes on. And I didn't know this at the time, but the reason it was being played so much was because um there was like a social media campaign in like late 2009 to get rage to christmas number one yeah with that song to stop uh some x factor contestant getting it for like the umpteenth year in a row yeah i i, I remember when that happened and i was so like i was like no fucking way really they actually did it like that yeah. is and that that's weird because that's not a thing over in America. There's no like mm. Christmas number one. I don't think it's ever been a thing where anybody cared what song was number one at Christmas. But apparently, in England, it's a big deal. It's a big so, deal. Yeah. So much so much so that's an entire section of the movie. Love actually is yeah. that one dude <laughs> trying to get a Christmas number one. Um, which really that should have been the whole movie. Like really, yeah. like you know, I, I I enjoy that movie, but that's the portion that keeps bringing me back. Because I like uh, what's his name, Bill Bill Nighy, not Nye. Yeah, it's not it, the science guy. Nah, nah, spelt different. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I like that guy. Is he still alive? Is Bill Nye still alive? I hope so. Yeah, I hope uh, so let me too. Have a look. I don't know. Bill. Yeah, because we've we, we've killed or I've killed people off in the past that were not dead, <laughs> and I don't want to do that. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> don't snap your fingers there, Thanos. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's still kicking. Sweet. 74. Okay. Yeah, 74 is like the new 54, really. So, you know, hmm. he's, got, he's got some more time. Born 12th of December, 1949. Oh, well, Just happy, happy, bela happy belated birthday, Bill Nighy. Um, hmm. Anyway, so... Uh, but yeah, I thought that was cool that they got to that to, to number one, and then and then apparently they they did like a free concert to celebrate it over there as well. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty that's pretty sweet. Like that's one of those things. That's one of those things where wasn't there also a thing? Was it was it in England or was it over here where somebody played "Killing in the Name" for twenty four hours straight or something like that? Or was it was oh, it was it the know. same thing? I think it was recent. It was recent. It was within the past couple years that some radio station kept playing the song over and over again for like 24 hours. 24 hour Rage Against the Machine. Canadian radio station plays Rage Against the Machine on loop for about 24 hours after two DJs are laid off. No way. Yeah. And this That's was recent. Awesome. It had to have been a couple years ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, t- 2022. Holy shit. 2022. Yeah. Um, which is that's but that's that's awesome. Anyway, okay. So a lot of a lot of rage talk, but not talking about albums because we, uh, so we might as well do that because they got four albums, and uh, I think we both said last time that we are our rank, rankings. We immediately knew what album was going to go where. Yeah, with these like very short discographies, it's 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 a lot easier to make a snap. Yeah, yeah that's where that's going. Sort but this, the, yeah, the and these are this. This is a band that I guess because they only have like three actual, you know, original music albums. Over the years of listening to these albums over and over again, I've always had my order. Even before I knew I was ever going to do a ranking, I in yeah. my head I always knew which one I thought was the best and the second best. So I mean, so it's uh, I, I, I it's why I didn't need any notes. But um, <laughs> so let's uh, let's get things started with with number four. Which um, could possibly be a joint number four because okay. you know because it, knowing our history, so you want to go ahead and start it off with your number four. If it does happen to be a joint, uh, we'll just jump straight in together and just t- talk all over it. Uh, yeah. My number four is Renegades. Same, same here, same here. Okay, not, it is. not, not, not that it's a last but not least kind of situation for me because this yeah. album to me is a banger. Oh, um, yeah. It's, it's just because it's not. I mean, it's weird because, like you said, it is like original sort of reinterpretations hey, of songs. Yeah. It's still a rage album, but not like one hundred percent original. Yeah, so. they're existing songs, but they've been rageified. So, and. Oh. Some very much so, you know. Yeah. Um, so kicking off, there's Microphone Fiend, Eric so, and Rakim. Start, start, I can stop right there because that's a song I know really well. Yeah. And so that's one of the ones where it's very different. So they didn't, they didn't like try to play the same notes that were being played in the original song. Nope. And not only that, the chorus of the Rage version is not the chorus... There is no chorus in in Microphone Fiend by Eric B. and Rakim, but right. they took that one line, the E F F E C T, and then they made that the chorus. Mm. And I always hear that and I go, "That's fucking brilliant!" Like they literally just said, "You know, here's this great fucking song, and we're just gonna make it our own song, with still with the you know you know the, the original lyrics, but they created this chorus that wasn't there." And I always enjoy that. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Like Pistol Grip Pump volume 10 cover that's that's a that's a fucking great one too but that one's a little closer to the original i just love that that riff uh kick out the jams taking it over to um you know kind of proto-punk uh stuff with mc5 see that's that one's more like the original only a little slower yeah the the cool thing about this album is the diversity of the influences because everything is on uh, full display. I mean, holy shit! You got a Devo cover and a Cypress Hill cover. I mean, Bruce Springsteen. There's a- everything. Yeah, uh, yeah. Renegades of Funk. I mean, I love that. It's yeah. so it's so well done. It's just yeah. a, such a great song. Mm. I mean, Beautiful World. I'm housing EPMD cover. I mean, That's oh. see, there you. I man, I for sure fucking wore my EPMD shirt. Ah. Uh, uh. It's not too late my, to change. They're my. I think it's. I think it's dirty. Because <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> I was. Because I, I. I would have seen it in my closet and go. Ah, I'm gonna wear that. Mm. Um, but I love EPMD and I love that. That song. Yeah. Um, but so uh, yeah, I, I love that whole album, whole first album, whole, all their fucking albums. All their albums are great. <laughs> Hell yeah! In my eyes, you got the Minor Threat cover. Mm-hmm. Now, my personal favorite of this album for two reasons is how I could just kill a man mm-hmm. because I'm a jump. Sh- I'm a jump back over to the San Andreas thing. The okay. original version of how I could just kill a man yeah. is on um, the radio Los Santos station, which is the gangster rap kind of thing. The original Cypress Hill version. Um, but rage completely changed all of the instrumentation and parts and and everything yeah a, a little bit of the structure is still in place but mm-hmm. 
you know i just i just love yelling bullshit and having yeah. that thing come back in you know and yeah. that, that is my favorite part of that song it's gonna be a long time before i finish one of the many missions that i have to establish to like the spliff and like your width and sights and if you ain't down bullshit dang I love it. It's which, such a good which, song. which would end up kind of relating to the band later on because mm. uh, three fourths of Rage Against the Machine would join with Be Real and Chuck D, yeah, and do uh, Prophets of Rage, which um, I guess we. I mean, I, I don't. I, I've only heard that album a couple times. I didn't love it, but it was mm. it was fun. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's like eventually somebody from Cypress Hill joins them and they can do that song. So. And everybody mentioned appears in that game soundtrack, which further proves it <laughs> is one of the greatest things ever made. Yeah. Oh, it, but honestly, what Rage did with this Cypress Hill song is incredible because the yeah. riffs, how, ev how everything's delivered is just perfect. Yeah. And honestly, whenever I think to listen to this song, it really is a toss up between the two because I'm like, Man, both are really good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I have a um, long history with the original one, though, because yeah. I got the first Cypress Hill album when it came out. Nice. And so that's an album that's like lived with me for a very long time. So I prefer the original, but the me Rage too. version is killer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like they immediately follow that with the Ghost of Tom Joad. Mm -hmm. Bruce Springsteen cover, great. Uh, Down on the Street, The Stooges. Street Fighting Man, Rolling Stones, Maggie's mm -hmm. Farm, Bob Dylan cover. I mean, it it's the last of the albums to be released. Mm -hmm. It's a covers album. Um, that being said, do not let it falling at the end of this ranking. Oh yeah, grant it anything other than a really good rating because yeah. holy fuck. Yeah, it's it's rage it, never it, made a stinker. No, no, it's and I, I, it's, it's, you know, now, now because they, they kind of half-assed announced again that they're kind of done, um, again yeah. as a band, uh, but so seeing as this is probably the last thing we're ever gonna get from Rage Against the Machine, I do like that they wrapped it up this way, even back then, because I'm like, oh, they did this one last thing where it's almost like a, you know, a nod to their influences. It, it nicely wraps everything up for me. So yeah. I, I like it. I don't know. Honestly, like I, I, if, if Rage Against the Machine, you know, you know, I don't know, squashed all their differences and got together and started writing music, I would, I would be kind of nervous because I don't know if it would be at, it would be good enough. It, it, yeah. I'm, it, it may be if they took kind of a different approach and didn't just try to make the same same shit they were doing, which they probably you know would have. Um, then I might have I might have enjoyed enjoy whatever it would be, but I don't know if I if I want to hear the same kind of thing from older dudes just because it, it it's been done. They've done it already. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyway, cool. Uh, so, so yeah. I yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't think I have anything to add to to that. It's it's a fun album, and if anyone's ever going to do a covers album, that's the way I think it should be done. Um, yeah, because it's you know there are a few songs on there where they stick you know pretty closely to what the original was, but not enough to where it doesn't sound like a Rage Against the Machine you know at song a version of it. So yeah. I like that. I, 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 you know, it's like, yeah, give me, just give me something interesting with it and don't just play the songs, <laughs> you know, cause it's, <laughs> it's kind of boring and it just seems like a cash grab at that point. Like we got to throw something out to make some money. So let's cover some songs, but, um, and you know, like, like Metallica did, you know, Metallica would make shit their own. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So number three, now this is where things get interesting because my my two and three tend to swap on any given day. Okay. Uh, that being said, this time around, um, with how I listened to the albums, my number three ended up being album number two in the discography, Evil Empire. Okay, we're we're not matched. I thought not. <laughs> um, so this is it, it's funny that they're. 
their discography is split up in such a way that like there's three distinct eras of the 90s represented that mm -hmm. they existed in and you got early 90s with the debut mid 90s with this one and mm -hmm. late 90s with uh the battle of los angeles but we're talking about the mid 90s album uh evil empire uh and this came, came out came out when i was a senior in high school nice <laughs> hell, hell of a soundtrack I, um, I i remember going and picking it up from the store and uh um, and was very very excited for it at the nice time. i mean this album's defining characteristic is it's cool and unusual production mm -hmm. um you know this it's punkier and you it and it sounds like you're watching them rehearse in a small room you well know, it, it's brendan o'brien isn't it didn't he do this one i uh, i potentially i believe so like yeah. there's there's a lot of hard left and right panning which mm -hmm. creates this space in which you're bombarded by um the politically charged hip-hop punk funk metal protest music at all angles you know um yeah. And that kicks off right at the beginning with People of the Sun. And yeah. I mean, Tim Comerford really holding it down on this one with his badass bass playing. Yeah. And that, like, it, it's almost like Tom Morello went, hey, you know, all those weird sounds that I was making in amongst all of those riffs that I was doing on the first album? I'm going to start doing that as much as the riffs. So like you end up with these like me, 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 really cool, weird things. Yeah. Uh, and then immediately follow that with bulls on parade. I mean, fuck, dude, Gu guitar hero three was where I first heard this one. Um, that's, that's, that's still like a fucking table flip song yeah. for me like it is <laughs> stop everything <laughs> when bulls yeah. on parade comes on yeah and it's like i remember hearing the solo in this song for the first time and being like this guy is doing dj scratches on a fucking guitar and it yeah. is i know it's been i know it's been done now for like a long time but yeah, at, the yeah. at, at the time i just i had my fucking you know that like galaxy brain moment where it's like Whoa. yeah well it's like yeah and it's 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 interesting because o over the years being a rage fan there are always those people that <clears throat> like to point out you know how simple it is to get some of those sounds like if you have the right pedals and i'm mm. like well yeah but he he's the one who did it <laughs> like yeah like I don't think he's ever come out and said I'm a virtuoso and I had all these amazing ideas. He just like wanted to make these cool sounds, and that's all I've ever been as a guitar player. He, you know, I've never really cared about somebody hearing me play guitar and going, "Oh, he's really good." I just wanted to like yeah. what sound sounds good in this song that mm -hmm. feels good to play, and that kind of I feel like that's what Tom Morello kind of has always done. Like, yeah. I feel like he I think he he was in a band prior to Rage, and I don't. I haven't heard them in a long time, but I feel like he did a lot more sort of guitar work that you could hear and go, oh, he's a really good guitar player. But I, then he was I seem to remember that. Sorry, keep keep going. So I was I was just gonna say I'm I'm gonna look that up. And um, um but yeah, so I think once Rage Against the Machine happened, he was just like, Yeah, I, I kind of just want to do these sounds. And if I can come up with some sort of interesting pedal combination or you know, scratching on some part of the string or whatever it is, you know, that's going to be what it what it's going to be. And I, I like that about it. I, li I like that it's not something that you couldn't just sit down and figure out. Um, yeah, because that makes it fun. You sit down and you're like, oh, fuck, I can play this little part now. It's, you know, I don't know. It's, it's always been kind of cool to me. Yeah. Oh, here here is uh, lock up. Lock uh, up. Some Something bitching this way comes. That's been <laughs> such a great title. Is that the name of the album? Yeah. Something, Something bitching. bitching this way comes. Oh, that is wow. That's so good. I never thought I'd see Tom Morello associated with the tag glam metal on Wikipedia, but wow, here we are. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Yeah, it's been the forever since I heard that 80s. album, so I, I got to go back and revisit it. But um, yeah. But yeah, but but for for sure, like, um, there's something about what the stuff he does on, on it's uh, it always kind of reminds me of 
you know, to compare it to another band of a similar time period, Pantera with like vulgar display versus Far Beyond Driven. I feel like Far Beyond Driven, uh, Dimebag got a little more like, oh, I'm, oh I got this weird pedal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do this weird part. And I'm just like, yeah, because it's like, I don't know, eventually at the end of the day, you're just like, well, I can play guitar really well. What are other things yeah. I can fuck around with? And, you know, it's some some guitar players are like, oh, I'm going to play keyboards now or whatever. You know, it's just, yeah. it just, I feel like it's, if you're really good at what you do, it's only a matter of time before you go, I'm do something else with it. Let's you know, get weird with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've found this new sound and I'm about to make it everyone's problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, but you know, jumping straight off of what we were saying about the weird, weird sounds, Vietnam, yeah. like the sounds he gets out of the guitar and, and that and, breakdown is killing. And the the odd time signature of that one, I've always loved that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a what? really good. That's a really good song for like <laughs> showcase showcasing how talented like every member of the band was. Yeah, drums, bass, guitar, and then you know Zach and his vocals, like you re- like songs like that. Where you really give everybody a little place to shine, and I I like that a lot. So, absolutely. Um, I mean, Revolver, just monstrous riffage. It's on one of my one of my favorite Rage songs. Revolver. Yeah. Yeah, that riff. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that it doesn't just continue that way. The fact that it goes in a different direction. Yeah. That, first time I heard that song, that just blew me away because I was just like, it's one of the coolest sort of rage sounding riffs I've ever heard. But then it goes yeah. into this other part that was cool in a way that I did not expect. And I'm just like, yeah, this is fucking yeah. killer. Absolutely. Uh, Snake Charmer, that mm-hmm. purposefully abrasive guitar solo just screams mid 90s fuck you attitude. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, you know, it, it, this purposefully, like, I love the nineties for this for this reason of just I'm gonna make something that sounds like I'm strangling a cat and you're gonna fucking like it. Yeah. You know? And it, it just it just fits, you know, in the right context. Tire me. There's quite a lot of faster stuff on this album, which definitely adds to the punk vibe. Yeah. Um, especially seeing as the debut was very groove focused. This one adds in a few more up tempo moments where you think, Oh fucking hell. Yeah. You know? Um down rodeo i mean i love this song so Classic. much yep. the riffs and the absolute sass that zach is dishing out on this one yeah i mean i mean the the lyric rolling down rodeo with a shotgun these people ain't seen a brown skin man since their grandparents bought one i mean oh yep and it's it's kind of sad Dude, that's it, that's one of those though. lines that like i'm a white dude and that line gives me chills i'm just yeah. like you know, I've got no, you know, I've, I've haven't been oppressed at all, mm. <laughs> but um, it, it, in any way, but um, but I'm just like, I just feel it, and I love, I love that about it. Yeah, well, it's, it's just something that's delivered with so much, just so much vitriol and and anger at something that you you just can't fake, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Without a face. I mean, the bass line in the verses is killer, and that chorus riff is badass. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wind Below, good lord, that riff is insane. Yep. Um, Roll Right, yet another incredible riff, and the song gradually adds more percussion throughout, including shakers and congas. And, yeah, it's an, it's an underrated case of development through a song. Yeah. And then finally, you got Year of the Boomerang, and there's some real unhinged energy to this closer. Honestly, there's an unhinged vibe to Evil Empire as a whole. It, it yeah. feels, it, it of all of the Rage albums, this one definitely feels like the one that could potentially fall off the rails at any second, but doesn't. Yeah, yeah. you know that this one is like a rabid dog at points. That's just I, I've always a tiny little chain link that's just waiting to come off. Yeah, I've always yeah. thought too that there the 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 band photo on the inside of the album of them playing in that room together. That's yeah. one of those rare cases where the picture looks like it sounds to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm with like, you. Yeah. Like it just I always look at that and I go, man, it just sounds like that. Like mm. these 
this amazing fucking band just banging it out in this little room and that i don't know i love that i love that about it Me which too. is why it's not which is why it's not my number three <laughs> yeah this like i say my two and three tend to swap around whereas my one mm-hmm. and my four are pretty cemented but but yeah, o- yeah. over to you okay I, there's no swapping here this has been my ranking of this these albums for years uh, my number three okay. is Battle of Los Angeles from 1999. Okay. And um, great, great album. Uh, I, I saw them on the tour for this album. And it was a weird, it was a weird show because it was in like a fucking sports arena. You mm-hmm. know, it was a big, yeah, and, and, and we had seats because we, we didn't have a lot of money. So we bought like the, we weren't super far away, but you know, we 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 weren't <laughs> close up or anything. Hmm. But um the one thing that I do remember is that there the vibes of the show fit the vibes of the people fit the show very well because I remember like right before Rage was gonna go on the stage, the lights started to come down, and all of a sudden I I, you start seeing all of these kids jumping out of their seats over the railing and running into the crowd. And Holy there's shit. fucking security trying to catch them. And we're just <laughs> watching them going like, oh, that one got away. Look, they're way in the crowd. They can't find them now. Like we were just watching this shit happen. I'm just like, this is fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> and then the fr- and then once they start playing, all of a sudden somebody just passes me a joint. I'm like, where did this fucking come from? Like, <laughs> I was just like, great. And so we just all got fucking stoned out of our minds on some rando who I don't know who shared their weed with me. <laughs> so, and I was just like, this is a beautiful thing. And then the best part of the show, I may have said this in the, and we did the 99 episode. Cause this is like one of my favorite concert moments like ever. Yeah. So they, they end the show with killing in the name. And of course, everybody's on their feet. Everybody's just doing, you know, yelling along. And then they do the build, the fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. And it builds up to where it's going to, it's going to, you know, go off and every light in the fucking place turns on. Yeah. So all of a sudden you're all looking at everybody and we're all yelling together. And all of a sudden we all can see each other. And I was just like, that's fucking genius because it was just, it made this moment that was already fun into this cool moment where I'm just like, Man, we really are in just a room of people all fucking yelling along to this amazing yeah. music. And it just it was really cool. And 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 so I, I've always looked at that as like, man, that's one of the the best ways that somebody has made like what could be viewed as a very sort of like um I don't know, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Uh it's it was it wasn't like a very you don't get a very it doesn't feel like a very physical experience seeing a band in a arena like you don't it doesn't move you the same way it does seeing in a it, smaller venue. it amplified it. it it kind of amplified that feeling of oh this is actually considering its size quite an intimate show experience yeah because sometimes you forget like you'll have to you'll you'll say well yeah it's me and thousands of other people but to the rest of the world this is not that many people and mm-hmm. we're here and so it's like, yeah, it's kind of, it was kind of cool anyway, but that was for this album. And I, I really like this album, but it very quickly, you know, once I got to know the album really well, I was like, yeah, it really is out of the three to me, the least, uh, I don't know. It's, 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 uh, it doesn't have the, like I, like I was saying last time with like Led Zeppelin four, and it's like if somebody said you know Led Zeppelin four is a bad album, I'd be like, no, you're wrong, and you're an idiot. Get the fuck out of my ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first two Rage albums are the those kind of albums for me. Did that? Did you see a thumb just come up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what happened with that? <laughs> I, was, I don't know what that. I'm trying to get to do it again. Get the fuck out. <laughs> It did. It didn't do it. Oh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Are, is, is that, that it, so? It's not the thumb thing. It's it's me saying, "Get the fuck out." Get the I fuck out. 
<laughs> Is he gonna do it? <laughs> what? Fuck you! I won't do what you tell me. It didn't do it. All right. Oh, anyway, it's not, it's not doing what we tell it. So, so uh, yeah, they're raging against, against the machine. Is what's happening. So the machine's they, raging against you right now. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, we've come full circle. Um. Anyway, it's it, to me, it's 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 not unfuckwithable. I guess, for lack of a better term, I I, 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 if somebody had some things they didn't like about Battle of Los Angeles, I'd be like, I get it. But there's still like plenty of bangers on this album, and it's still very enjoyable to me. And in some in some ways, it is. There are areas where they've sort of progressed in what they were doing but then there are other songs where i go well this doesn't feel different enough to me mm-hmm. to um really make it that exciting of an album but I, it, I love it it's just uh i have way more to say about the first two albums than this one because this one is like it almost feels like things had kind of run their course and they were still very capable of making some absolute bangers uh, you know songs but it, it, there's that there's that part of the album where I go, it kind of feels like this, this they were running out of steam a little bit, mm. because um and you know and the, famously the band didn't get along, and nobody that's the weird thing is that uh, members of the band have said things about how they didn't get along, but I don't think I've ever heard anybody point a finger at what particular person was the problem, mm. and. And so I don't really know, um, but they didn't get along. And so obviously at this point, you know, I feel things probably had run their course. And um, I think Zach has said in some, at some point that they literally argued about everything down to what color a shirt should be. Hmm. Um, So, so yeah, I mean, and I guess it makes sense. And then at the end of the day, you have to think about why are you doing this? You know, like what's, the point because a lot of what you know i don't know about every band member but zach and and tom for sure are very socially involved politically involved with stuff and they're able to do those things without being in a rock band um and they do do those things without being in a rock band but um so I guess once once that once the musical aspect of it is kind of run its course, it's like, well, do we really need to continue putting stuff out in order to just keep saying the same shit? Because they're to be fair, like they're as we learned over the past several years, their audiences, their audience, a large part of their audience had no fucking clue what they were talking about anyway yeah. <laughs> um and and don't even under don't understand you know the the music business and how it all works because i get so annoyed when people make those jokes about oh they're raging for the machine now because they were charging this much for their shows i'm yeah. like well, that's how much everybody charges for their sh- shows and it and in the grand scheme of things, if you really go and look at all of the tours and all of the shit that they did over their existence, a huge amount of their money was donated. They did all kinds of shows for free where the money went to whatever cause it was going towards. And not only that, like the the thing that like that that I that some people I think don't seem to grasp is that if you're going to voice a protest hmm. so that everyone hears what you're saying and maybe you make a difference, you need to be able to speak to the largest amount of people possible. Yeah. So why would you start a band and be like, we're going to protest against the government and these really big entities, but no, we're just going to play these little corner punk clubs to 50 kids who aren't going to go vote anyway. So it's Mm. just like, it, it always made sense to me that they needed to be on a major label. They needed to, they, they got to be a band where they can play fucking arenas. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's great because that's how you, that's how you have to do it. Otherwise, 
why would you? No one's going to hear you. <laughs> who's going to pro- who's going to protest something? It's like you know, oh, I want to protest how awful the government is, but I'm going to go do it over at the Seven Eleven on the corner. And it's yeah. like, well, maybe you, if you cause enough of a ruckus, you might get a news crew out there. But at the end of the day, yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's so yeah. it, 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 it sucks that, that, and it's not just rage against the machine. It's a, it's a lot of people on the internet. And I've talked about it numerous times that just don't understand how it all works and don't understand that, that you have, there has, there had has to be a balance between what are we doing this for? What are the causes that are important to us? Are we giving to those causes? And then can I feed my family? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, cause I, you know, it's like, they, I, so I have no problem with Tom Morello having a nice house. No fucking problem with that because there are billionaires who have done mm-hmm. fuck all with their money, but yet people are still like fucking rock star millionaires. And I'm like, you're pointing at the wrong fucking person. Ladies and gentlemen, the wrong, because yeah, they, they've done a lot more than most people have done. So are are we projected to see the first trillionaire soon? Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. That shit pisses me off so much. I I feel like, yeah, like, what is it? Let, let's see. I I saw something about seeing the first trillionaire, like first trillionaire. Who will be the first trillionaire? World will have its first trillionaire within a decade. Report finds. Yeah, yeah, and that's so, uh, truly sickening at this. Well, point. I mean, the thing, the thing that the fact that really. I I have to disconnect. Like, you know, I have conversations with you about this kind of stuff sometimes when it comes up. But, mm-hmm. you know, once we're done with this, I do my best to step away from all kinds of stuff because it really bums me out. And the fact that it really bums me out is that the, the top 1% have more money than the other 99% combined. Mm-hmm. And it, that yeah. is fucking insane. And 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 I and I know that a lot of those people, because you know, they want to be able to keep more money and have more tax write-offs. Sure, some of them donate to some organizations, and some of them are good organizations. And there are rich people who do good shit. I'm not shitting on rich people. I'm not an I'm not an anti-capitalist, mostly because I don't know what the alternative is would be that would work well. Um, so, so like I may have my problems with the system or whatever, but I'm never going to be that loud about it because I'm the first person to say, look, I don't have the answers. So, you know, my, my, uh, my, my issues are always social issues. Like I'm all about people being able to live their own lives and be respected. That's all I want. But when it comes to other stuff, I do look at it and go, man, that's fucked up. And so I appreciate people that do something, even if it's just getting a message message out to a uh, hundred thousand teenagers. Who the fuck cares? It's just yeah. It's just one of those things. Did you send me something? I did, and it, what you were saying is it was making me think of this. And it's uh, basically you keep scrolling right, uh-huh. um, and it shows you the the wealth of Jeff Bezos stacked. <laughs> next to everything else and the more you keep going the more obscene it becomes to where this giant orange block that oh my god going <laughs> um and it and it it shows you what is it like every 10 pixels you scroll is five million dollars uh Holy and shit. the more yeah, you, yeah. the more you keep going it shows you like these tiny little blocks that represent you know how much money it would cost to give chemotherapy to all cancer patients and i love that it says we're nearing the end now and then it goes lol just kidding we're about a third of the way keep scrolling through (laughs) yeah it it is one of the most saddening things but enlightening things i've ever looked at yeah like once you once you start getting to like the wealth of Beyonce and it's like a Lego brick compared to this fucking wall. Uh, and you keep going. And this yeah. was made a couple years ago. 
Like, this is not up to date with how much yeah. he has now, but... I love that, that was, we're having this conversation. It's very appropriate for Rage yeah. Against the Machine. Um, anyway, the point I was trying to make, I don't know how I got off on that, but I always think about that because I'm a big Rage Against the Machine fan, and I constantly see these moronic butt puppets that are just like... <laughs> I love fucking that. saying saying shit like the, and they, they they don't understand how it all works. They don't understand the government. They don't understand you know, economics. They don't understand being in a band. They don't understand what goes into being in the band. What go what goes into music distribution and touring and and just being a fucking human being. It seems like so some people are just so removed from everything that isn't their world of bullshit that yeah it, it just it bums me out because i'm just because i just i'm I, I feel like i'm always constantly overthinking what i think about something let from me tell the, you from the smallest thing like yeah. is this great white album actually really good or do i not like it all the way to how can we solve you know the the homeless crisis in the world and you know it's like but but I, either way i i always just want to shut up and go i don't have i don't really have the answers and i feel like if that's why most of what i do on the internet is just me going hey this album's cool guys check it yeah. out so you know because <laughs> that's all i got it's really all i got well let me put it this way on on my end uh we very recently uh, we as in britain mm -hmm. um have invented um basically a, a military grade laser weapon capable <laughs> of um destroying a target at a range of several miles away with the pinpoint accuracy to hit a pound coin um with this fucking laser meanwhile oh, no. you know that if if you look it up we now have a mini death star um However, what we also have is a cost of living crisis and a bunch of people that can see their own breath from within their flat, you know? Yeah. And, and rather than it, this is what I've been doing this winter. I've been on a weekly basis, removing mold from my ceiling rather than turn on the heating because I simply can't afford it. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 It's when, when it's cheaper to buy bottles of mold killer, <laughs> than to have a radiator on, you know, I oh, feel man. like we could have held off on the Death Star for a little yeah. bit. <laughs> yeah. Know? You think? Yeah. <laughs> but to be, to be fair, like if that's the kind of technology that we have, I, you know, this is going to, I don't know. I, this is literally just my brain working. And as soon as I say this, I'm going to feel bad about saying it. But I'm like, whenever there's somebody that starts a war and we know the one person that's like making the decisions, just mm -hmm. fucking aim it right at them. Take them yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Don't 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 kill hundreds of thousands of people. Just yeah. the one asshole. <laughs> just, you know, because the other guys, say, a lot of people in these militaries, they probably have no fucking choice because uh, they're either going to be homeless or they're going to fight a war. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I was I was just going to say apparently the uh, the rounds are significantly cheaper than standard ammunition it being a directed beam of light so I suppose yeah. there is that yeah. um however that being said we do have a uh financial problem over here right now uh, I mean as we do over here as well but yeah. I mean um yeah so anyway there's a lot of issues folks and to think that you understand the answer is uh there is a lot more to everything. Than... Yeah. If you, if you, I mean, to be fair though, if there is somebody out there that watches our shit or listens to our shit that legit has a good, you know, solution to something, then I hope you're out there trying to get your voice heard. And I hope that you would have the same kind of means that Rage Against the Machine had to say what they wanted to say. Even if most people seem to be unsure of what the machine was. And um, anyway. So that, yeah, and I'm kind of glad that I am on the side that has the laser. So, <laughs> 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 uh, 
that's the, it's great that like that the UK would have that kind of thing because then you know then they can just be kind of you know uh stereotypically uh uh polite British people when they use it and just like blow the fuck out of somebody and be like, oh sorry. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the, the staff on the Death Star were British for a reason. Oh, that's <laughs> true. They were British. Dude, hang I mean, on. Let me see if I can send you a photo of this shit real real quick, because it is I mean, kind of ob obscene looking. Look up UK laser, UK military laser. It's fucking UK crazy that we have this. UK military laser. UK military laser. I mean, look at this fucking thing. It's red. It's the red thing. If if you see it pop up, it's a red picture. Yeah, I, yeah. It's like it's it's a it's a it's a night shot of this. Yeah, yeah. You seeing it? Yeah. Military laser achieves UK first. Wow. Yeah. That is Look insane. At that, shit. that is it's insane. crazy. We wow. really got space lasers before GTA Six. <laughs> <laughs> I and so I mean, okay. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> as, as long as they get, they I would just like because it seems like it's an, an inevit inevitability that there's always just going to be wars and fighting just because humans are fucking stupid. Yeah. But I'm just like. If you can minimize the uh, the unnecessary deaths, yeah, um, that's why I've, that's why I've always agreed that with a lot of people that jokingly would say things like, "Oh, look, the two the two people in power should just be put in a room together and they should have knives and yeah. fight it out." And I'm like, in a perfect world, that's how it would work. Because if you have one motherfucker that thinks he's the leader of all the shit and fuck those yeah. people, well, then yeah, the two of you get together and and duke it out. And then, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, bet, I, I don't know what that would solve. And you know what? It solves about as much as a regular war would solve. So, yeah. so shit. Um, anyway, how many people did we lose in this uh, portion of the show? Um, I don't know. I anyway. think the laser talk was kind of engaging. <laughs> the la yeah. I mean, it's impressive, but at the same time, horrifying. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so it was so... The Battle of Los Angeles is my number three because, uh, yeah, I like it. But the first two to me are absolutely unfuck with albums. So um, that went at number three. Cool. I can jump I'm straight off of that. Two. I can jump straight to my number two, which is the Battle of Los Angeles. Um, and now this is the late 90s album. Uh, yep. And it's probably the most produced of the original um albums is very layered it yeah. sounds very 1999 compared to the previous two it's a yeah. lot more upfront in your face um and it, it, i just generally speaking it's got a lot more layers i would say as opposed to the more bare bones thing going on especially on evil empire but yeah testify is a hell of an opener mm -hmm. um immediately followed up with gorilla radio I mean, what a one-two punch. Yeah. Come, yeah. come like a bomb. Absolutely crushing bass line in that. Mic Check is a very hip-hop type track. There's quite a few very hip-hop moments on this album mm -hmm. uh, in particular. You know, before it was very much a part of their sound, whereas on this album there were some almost straight up just hip-hop songs. Um Sleep Now in the Fire is an absolute banger with an iconic video. Yeah. Uh, yep. Born of a Born of a Broken Man. That riff, holy shit, just came mm -hmm. out of nowhere. It, yeah, that's one of those riffs where it's like enter the ring to it, you know? Um Born as Ghosts, second born song in a row. Cool song. Yeah. <laughs> uh Maria. I feel like I feel like Rage Against the Machine aren't brought enough brought up enough in conversation when it comes to riffs because mm -hmm. they have so many great ones but you know you always you always think you know sabbath zeppelin you know but when it comes down to it uh, many of my favorite riffs are rage riffs yeah uh, i i, I like think all time the funny thing about that is i feel like guitar players know about yeah. rage riffs um 
because I, I don't, yeah, I, I've heard that from many other guitar players where you just, you get to that moment where you're like, oh, I got to fucking learn how to play that riff and yeah. and you can learn it and then it just feels fucking good to play. Yeah. So I've, al yeah. I've always had fun playing Rage Against the Machine songs, whether yeah. that be, it'd be on any instrument, you know, guitar, bass, drums. I mean, it's, it's, there's just a certain pocket to this unit that's mm -hmm. just so good, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Voice of the Voiceless has some bluesy rocking guitar playing going on in that one. Um, New Millennium Homes, swaggering track. Ashes in the Fall has some cool, eerie guitars on it. Uh, it's a real Tom Morello showcase. Mm -hmm. War Within a Breath, heavy ash track. Honestly, great grooves, great lyrics, and great riffs. Yeah. And that is why Rage Against the Machine, albeit with a short discography, is pretty damn consistent right the way through. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I agree. I mean, and, and on any given day of the week, depending on what mood I'm in, if I want produced rage or stripped back rage, my number three, uh, two and three will swap around. But yeah. um, something had to go first. Uh, so yep. over to you for your number two. Cool. Um, my my number two is the self titled debut album from nineteen ninety two. Wow. Cool. And um, which is an absolute classic. And and re really like the even though it came out you know after Ring the Noise you know with Anthrax and then so that kind of thing had been done and obviously you've heard songs like Epic from Faith No More and so there has there had been this sort of rap metal kind of thing yeah but at even at the time this felt like a game changer when it came to that kind of thing because I got so into this album and I remember I, I I remember the way that I would describe it to everybody I would be like it's a it's a hip hop album, but played by a rock band. Yeah, I'm just like because that's what it is. Because it's not to me, it's not rap metal or rap uh, rock. It's a hip hop album played by a rock band, and, yeah. and 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 there are parts of it obviously where you know Zach like screams and stuff, and it gets a little more aggressive. But no, no other band that did the hip hop metal thing did it in this particular way where it just feels seamless. Yeah. It like, just feels, it doesn't feel like it's trying to be anything else than what it actually is. Yeah. And, and I love the fact that, um, and th th that's another thing. That's a, another thing that I read on the internet that just blows me away is that people, so, somebody made the comment, that they prefer the 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 early rage where Zach didn't rap on it. And I'm just like, the very first song on the very first album is rapping. <laughs> <laughs> Do these people have ears? I like, don't I don't know. I don't what? know the stupid shit that people say. Sure, the chorus of Bomb Track isn't isn't rapping. He's yelling it, but Literally, the first line is the most one of the most hip hop things. The suckers be thinking that they can fake this, but that's already rapping. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I people just get shit in their heads, and they it's some sort of revisionist thing where they just decide that something is different than what it is because it fits better in with their view. I, I have no fucking clue. Oh, but I don't know, man. But this album is like the production of it. The songs, the order of the songs, it just takes you in, into so many different moods because it's not just rap stuff because you get to other songs that, you know, are way more like Settle for Nothing. Settle for Nothing is, is almost like heavy in an emotional kind of way. Yeah. And, and then just the, just, I don't know, just everything about the album leading up to freedom the ending track is a, an ama amazing album closer yeah and and i remember that was the first time that um 
I remember MTV letting a, a, a cuss word slip on the air. And I don't know if it's because it was on Headbangers Ball, which was uh, which was on later. But at the end of that song where he goes, bring that shit in, they would not edit that. Wow. And I was always like, did they just let him, did you say shit on MTV? And I, I really think it's because they, they played the video and it was after 10 o'clock or some shit like that over here. So you get away with it. But I always thought that was cool. But anyway, yeah, this album was was a big deal for me just because, like I said, I started to play guitar in 94, beginning of 94, 93. I don't know. Uh, somewhere around there, I started to play guitar. And um, it was one of the first albums that I sat, you know, I I, I had pausing the song playing one learning to play one part then learning to play the next part and then going back to the beginning of the song and playing the song along with the album and it was just so much fun and um and i just think this album has just aged so well because it it does have that that quality where it does it definitely sounds like an album from the early 90s but it still sounds like something very important you yeah. know, it's like, you know, like people talk about like, you know, for lack of a better comparison, like like Marvin Gaye, What's Going On is an album that you listen to and you go, this sounds like it came out in the 60s. And it did. But you hear some of that stuff and you still it still feels like something meaningful. It holds up. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And, and Rage, the Rage's Machine album is the same way, just because it was probably also because it came out in the early nineties. And that was, I was finally old enough to watch the news and understand what was going on in the Mm. world. And, um, I've never, I mean, I've never felt happy with my country ever. (laughs) Um, I, I, I felt different levels of not happy, you know, like sometimes I'm just a little not happy. And then other periods I'm very not happy, but, um, Rage Against the Machine just kind of the, this album just kind of encapsulated that feeling of of a uh, sort of a young people being like you know look we're we're at a point now where we can say this shit is fucked and we need yeah. to continue to say this shit is fucked and so um yeah I, I could go on about this one for a while just because it 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 really does. It really is one of those albums. It's one of the best ever. Yeah. But to me, not the best Rage Against the Machine album. And so I ended up putting it at number two. But it is your number one, Rage Against the Machine, self-titled. It is my number one. And my number one is Rage Against the Machine. Rage Against the Machine, self-titled, 1992. The Burning Um, Dude album. Yeah, yeah. And that that is a grisly image. I remember, like, the first time... I saw the photo. I couldn't. I couldn't really make out what it was for a moment. Like, yeah. I, I remember being a you know an innocent, wide-eyed, eleven-year-old seeing this because uh, this is one of my earliest albums that I really got into. Um, yeah. Because because I was before I got into rock, I was into Eminem and yeah. adjacent people. You know, so I was very familiar with hip hop. And then when I heard this album, I was like, oh my God, it's this thing I already really like with this thing I'm just now getting into. And it was this yeah. like meeting of the minds where it was like, holy shit, this exists. Um, but where is it? Rage Against the Machine album cover. It's um, it's the monk from Vietnam who burned himself yeah. alive, isn't he? And I remember, so, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's always it's it's. I mean, I realize that it's it's a it's a published photograph, so it's not like that big a deal. But yeah. still, you know, you you look at that album cover, especially for me, having seen this album in my life for thirty years. It, sometimes you forget that you're just looking at a person who is killing themselves. Yeah, and <laughs> so it's, it's it's insane. It is, it is a really shocking image, and I remember like looking at the the album cover and. I couldn't pick out that it was a guy. I just thought it was this. It, it's funny if not to reduce the fact that this is a man immolating himself. 
But yeah. if you like look at the near the face, I always thought it looked like a cool flaming dog dude. And it was like the way the flames <laughs> have formed, it kind of looks like a like a dog devil kind of face coming off him. But you know, yeah. I think every- I, I think the reason why I knew always knew it was a dude from day one is that I bought the cassette version and the cassette cover is literally just that portion of the picture. Right. It's yeah. just the guy and it says raging as the machine at the top. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, being 11 and not knowing what the fuck I was looking at. L- knowing it yeah. now after watching like a Vietnam documentary a, f- a few years later, I was like, that's that album cover. Yep. Oh, I had it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> not yeah. a not a weird dog, dude. <laughs> yeah, not a cool flaming dog man guy. A, a yeah. monk tragically setting himself alight because Vietnam was fucked. But yeah anyway about the album itself um i mean bomb track what a way to kick off the album Mm -hmm. like and the fact that it kicks off with that yeah so cool and then that doesn't show up in the song again but it's such a cool part and then sorry i had a burp there uh every single part of this song absolutely kills yeah um great yeah you know just like i learned every part of this song yeah um even the solo for for this one i remember being i was like oh my god i learned a guitar solo um mainly because it's one of the least ridiculous sounding things on the album um killing in the name my introduction to the band via gta san andreas but also Mm -hmm. uk christmas number one uh kick-ass song one of my favorites take the power back funky ass song one of my favorite bass lines of all time that yeah it's great stuff subtle for nothing is this like slow burning angry song that just like seethes away and then explodes but the the cool thing about this song for me was always that like really quiet dainty jazzy solo in there yeah like, yeah like it's so outside the box at the time you know um then you get bullet in the head i mean the riffage in the second half of this song is unparalleled yeah. 10 out of 10 hell i'd give it an 11 like i Every time that chorus hits, down, now, now, just victims of the in-house drive-by, down, down, now, like every time that hits, it just yeah. doesn't get old. Yeah. Um, and not to mention the and when the when it drops out and it's the bass doing it, like every yeah. part of this song. And I, that, I, that part of the song, I always loved zach's screaming at the end of the song how it sounded and at the time i had no idea that he came from the hardcore world and that's what he was doing prior to this anyway like he was in inside out um but i had no idea at the time but i just remember hearing his screaming be like man that's like that's like he can rap but then he just sounds amazing when he gets really aggressive with the vocals as well yeah yeah that always stood out to me too because it was like he'll be spitting one minute and then just shrieking out these yells. Um, now here's a fun personal anecdote about a song. Know mm-hmm. your enemy. My mom was knocked out in a nightclub mosh pit to this song. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tell the story. I mean, okay. you, weren't, you weren't there obviously, but you know, no, nope, go, gra- nope. go grab your mom and have her tell the story. The special <laughs> guest, special guest. I'll, 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 Tell it vicariously because I've I've heard it many times, but uh, basically, uh, she was in a nightclub called the Bougie, which played uh, kind of like it did like rock and metal nights in the yeah. early nineties, and it was in it's in Nuki, and I think I just you know dox myself gesturing <laughs> Nuki's that way. Oh um, yeah, because I know exactly where that is. I'm gonna come find you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit, they know where I am. <laughs> Flush the coke. Um <laughs> Do, when you when you when you go there, is there a sign that says we did it all for the nuki? <laughs> and that town has changed forever for me. 
Every time I go there now, I did it all for the Nuki. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but yeah, on a night out, the, uh, she happened to be in the rock bar section of the club. Uh, shit's going off. Rage Against the Machine has just put this album out. And I, I think they were playing it from like start to finish or some shit. Mm-hmm. But Know Your Enemy comes on and she just remembers the whoop, 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 whoop. Come on, boom. And then waking up outside the nightclub on the floor, basically being resuscitated with this other dude who had like lunged into her by accident. Yeah. Completely fucking drunk. But he's like, oh my God. Oh my God. I just killed a lady. Oh my God. (laughs) And he's, I think, if I recall correctly, it was like a battle vest, but it was like an American flag <laughs> battle vest. What? Uh, yeah, and it was like um, this dude had like massive blonde white snake hair, apparently, but he was like happened to be in this mosh pit, and um, yeah, my mom got knocked out in a mosh pit, which is uh, pretty Not rad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I just want to talk to the guy, the British guy with the American flag vest and be like, what is that all about, really? (laughs) But you know what? To be fair, when I was young, I had a British flag, a Union Jack on my wall, like a like a really big one that was on the wall of my room. And and I think it was just because there was so much cool shit from England that I just really I really was like, oh, I like this flag, how it looks looks way cooler than our flag. Flags are a strange one, aren't they? It's like they're they're (laughs) they're. They're like pieces of fabric that are really symbolic and float around. Um, but also it's, like <laughs> it symbolizes that you own land. Yeah. It's like yeah. that that Eddie Izzard thing. It was like, <laughs> We claim this this land in the name of England. You can't claim us, we live here. Yeah. Do you have a flag? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh, oh, uh, where where was I? Uh, you know yeah. what? I I haven't actually talked about the song "Know Your Enemy" yet. So um, it's in the Matrix, yeah, yeah, and it's a badass song. Like mm-hmm. start to finish, I think this is my favorite Rage song next to "Killing in the Name." So um, the, the this is my least favorite on the album, and it's a really it's a dumb reason why because okay. the riff the riff to the song always sounded too similar to Frankenstein. Oh, and so like even when this album came out i already knew that song and so i've always heard it and gone oh man it's too close too close to frankenstein i i don't know dude i love it i i love every part of it but oh man wake up is my last alarm in the morning oh no wait no wait no wake up is the one in the matrix no your enemy or maybe they both are I think there's two songs in the Matrix. I think "Wake Up" is is the one that plays at the end of the Matrix. Maybe something, uh, something like that. You want me to look it up. Uh, let's I don't. It. Who fucking cares? The first Matrix is the only good one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't even seen the fourth one. I don't. I'm not. I like Keanu and all, but I just I'm just not interested for some reason because I did not like the second two. Uh, wake up! Yeah, wake up's in there. Brush, put a little makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, when did we do that system episode that was like years ago now four years, years ago? ago this year Fuck. it's been it's been a while oh my god that was early um yeah. where where am i at sorry there's my notes uh wake up is my last alarm in the morning for when the other 60 fail um specifically the bit where he goes wake up yeah um because I stuck it in logic, cut out everything else, and just looped that. <laughs> nice. And compressed it to make it extra abrasive when it goes off in the morning. Uh, Fistful of Steel. Even the deepest cuts of this record are fucking yeah. killer, man. That's a great super, one. Super tasty. Um, Township Rebellion. I mean, the cowbell action in those beats are fucking godlike. Um, and Freedom, man. Like, what a big finish that song is. Killer closer and that ascending breakdown at the end to the, is yeah. to this day one of the most crushing things ever put to date. That no 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 freedom yeah right yeah killer stuff that uh, debut and mm-hmm. it's it's a my favorite 
So over to you for Sweet. your favorite. <laughs> My number one is Evil Empire from 1996. Cool. Absolutely love this album. And it, it to me is one of those great examples of a second album where the mm. band builds upon what they've done, progress a little bit and just put out what I think is some of the best shit they ever did. To me, like Bulls on Parade is the Rage Against the Machine song. Like yeah. to me, it's like, I know people would probably say Killing in the Name, but I'm like, I don't know. Because I like that song, but Bulls on Parade is just, yeah, <laughs> it's just <laughs> fucking amazing. And um, that alone, but just the sound of this album, it's the most urgent and in your face. But still, the production is really good. It's not like in your face in the way that like modern production is, but it's it's a, it sounds aggressive. They incorporate you know different elements. Like you have you know songs like like tire me and and uh, uh, it's the fucking other one uh, revolver. Those are just songs yeah. that you know did them just doing different shit. And um, this was a big deal when this album came out because there was a good couple years you know between the first one and this one. And I was really into rage so much so that like I owned like bootlegs. I went, you know, cause they would do like the, they do these record conventions. They probably do them over there too, but they do them, you know, randomly. And you always have those people who are selling boots of live shows or whatever. And I remember like, you know, I had the, I had two rage against the machine bootlegs. One of them was a live performance from somewhere. I don't remember. Um, but the other one was, their original demo on it like the with you know with songs that they never put out and stuff but i just remember like i was so into them that i just wanted to i wanted everything i could find and then it took so long for them to do another album that you know all of a sudden i was you know about to graduate high school when this came out and um but i just remember we just had such a big impact on me um mostly just because by 1996 i was really struggling to like stay interested with like heavy guitar music and evil empire was one, one album that came out and i went oh this is undeniably fucking great so yeah i'm just happy that this shit's still kicking it and um i don't know yeah i just think that it's their best sort of like album when it comes to the the different angles that they come at their songs with the energy of the album the performances um the the color of the album cover is very pleasing to me for some reason yeah um, it's a it's a shade of yellow that looks it's not bright i don't know what you would call that shade of yellow but um i think it's a good like middle ground yellow where it's not yeah. it's not overly saturated but it's still very vibrant yeah it's all, i've always really liked the album cover even though i don't i actually don't know what it is and i've never looked into it but you know <laughs> Could have done that for this episode, but didn't. But um, yeah, I just think it's one that over the years I've just grown to love more and more, and it has become my go-to rage album. And yeah, I really, it really does to me have the the most like. If I'm gonna get somebody into rage, raging as the machine, it's gonna be songs from this album that I'm gonna play for them. And then I would be like, oh, by the way, they also do that. Fuck you, I won't do what you told me. Song, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, the Christmas number one that we all we all know and love, and um, but yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about this one just it, because I've I've kind of said all the things about Rage that I feel throughout the episode, but this one, yeah, I really just think this is when it comes to who Rage were as a band, this is the best representation sonically and songwriting wise and lyrically, like everything. I it just feels so perfect in this album. So um, that ends up being my number one, Evil Empire. Cool. And that's literally those are these are these are my notes. It says Evil Empire, nineteen ninety six. That's a pretty good note. Because <laughs> I because this is how I start them off. I put I, g I give it its own sheet of paper, and then if there's anything I feel like I want to remember, I'll write it down. But this is one where I just went, nip, nip, don't worry don't about it. it. It's fine. Don't need yeah. it. I just wasted fucking paper. All right. <laughs> Which is weird because I could just make notes on my phone. Yeah. But 
I'm really I'm really bad. Like my handwriting is really shitty, but it's nowhere near as bad as how shitty my thumbs are when I'm trying to type something out. <laughs> I'm so awful at that. It's like if I if I need to if I anytime I've ever sent you any message, I guarantee you it took me about 10 minutes to put the message together before I sent it, unless I'm just saying okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway so there you go rage against the machine let's uh, we, as we normally do whenever we finish uh ranking a discography we celebrate oh. like this before Three. you do that oh shit okay uh you know you said that you uh, wanted to look into what the album cover of evil empire actually is yes uh so the the it, i have here the packaging on that there's the Wikipedia section on the packaging of Evil Empire, yeah. and it said this is a quote from Zach de la Rocha or Roca. Is it Roca? I've always said Zach de la Roca because I feel like it's Sp- it's Spanish or, or yeah. whatever. You um, you probably but, said it the right way, um, but I don't know but, for sure. Well, well, he said the image of the second record was a little more ironic. Uh, considering if you look very closely at the boy's face, he symbolizes the power structure in the U S and if you look at him, he's smiling as if he's in control. But if you look deeper into his face, you see that he's afraid because he knows what's coming. He knows that poor people in the U S are not going to suffer in the way that they're suffering without taking action. Holy shit. That's all in that boy's face. (laughs) Let me go back and look at that. Okay. Read me that bit again. I'm going to look at this boy's face while you say it, say it again. Okay, the image of the second record was a little more ironic, considering if you look very closely at the boy's face, he symbolizes the power structure in the US, and if you look at him, he's smiling as if he's in control, but if you look deeper into his face, you see that he's afraid because he knows what's coming. He knows that poor people in the US are not going to suffer in the way that they are suffering without taking action. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the, this here, the, it, it goes, it goes in deeper. It says the cover of the album features an altered version of a painting of the 1940s slash fifties comic book hero, crime buster done by Mel Ramos with the oh. emblem on the boy's costume changed from a C to a lowercase E the caption crime buster changed to the album's title and the color of the star in the background changed. The boy on the cover was author, uh, and businessman. Uh, Ari Meisel, Meisel, well, uh, when he was 11 years old, uh, Meisel, Meisel told Kerrang that the original painting was a birthday present from Ramos. Uh, additional artwork for the album was created by Barbara Kruger, some of which appears in the video Bulls, uh, for Bulls on Parade. Okay. Um, uh, the right. album CD booklet includes a picture of a pile of various political and philosophical books, which include yep. Ump Dean, um, very stereotypically less leftist books, including, uh, you know, what? It's, it's all there. I don't need to read anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I guess. It, so <laughs> I just love Zach's explanation of the boy's face. And really, yeah. at the end of the day, like, you know, I love these guys. They're fucking great. But at the end of yeah. the day, it's like, oh, no, this was just a picture of a boy. And he's like, well, if you look deeply, he knows that something's about to go down. I'm like, well, it's not all of us, really. We're all we all <laughs> we're, we're we even when we're smiling. There's a something, something in our face where because we all know death is imminent. So there, yeah. our smiles are not, you know, unless you're a billionaire, maybe they smile in a different way than the rest of us do. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> For sure. I'm glad. I'm glad I learned that. It's still to me a very cool album cover, even Which if I don't. Which planet can I build a golf course on next? Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the real question. That's the mm. when you when you ask questions like that, you're living the dream, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> anyway, all right. So we're done with raising us the machine. Now we celebrate. Three, two, one. Yeah, yeah! we did it. Yeah! Yeah! Which yes, is appro- appropriate because that's. A metal and rap fusion song yeah. and um a very a very overlooked classic yes uh jaw rule <laughs> and, <laughs> and metallica anyway That's not um, fraud i would call that false advertising <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's it. For, thanks to the uh, the peanut butter platypuses and the aluminium squirrels. Yep, um, they're here too now. Who really, if it, if you're if you're here, then you must either be a, a, a huge rage fan or you're one of those two types of people because you had to sit through me doing some sort of rant about about social political things, um, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, whatever you know it's like it's all you know i i, I feel i feel like i so every time i do that anytime we've ever done an episode where i go off on something like that yeah i always double i always rethink things later on and go look did i say anything stupid or do i get across that i'm concerned but i don't know the answer because that's all i want to ever get across to everybody yeah is that I'm, anytime I'm I, the same anytime that i i'm very you know emotional about some usually social issue it, it it isn't me trying to say i know the answer um <laughs> because i think that's part of the frustration is that i feel like a lot of times i don't know the answer i don't know the way to solve problems i i just know i just know evil empire fucking rules <laughs> <laughs> anyway what's that bill and ted line where it's like uh they they say like a like a Socrates quote and then they're like that's us dude oh yeah Whoa. something about knowing is knowing that you know nothing you know or, nothing yeah yeah Whoa. well I, I mean honestly that's the what do they call that the Dunning Kruger effect Socrates <laughs> <laughs> no Dunning Dunning Kruger the Dunning Kruger yeah. effect is is basically dividing the people people who are very intelligent are constantly thinking that they don't know enough and are mm -hmm. constantly looking to prove things wrong and trying to grow. Whereas the people who aren't very smart think that they know everything. Yeah. And so you can't really do anything about it. It's like, it's a, I'm simplifying the Dunning, Dunning Kruger effect, but it's essentially that it's, it's that the, it's usually the people that are the hardest on themselves are the smartest people because they're yeah. not satisfied, you know, with, mm. oh, I'm, I'm great and I know everything, you know, which is, yeah. But I do know that uh, Eddie Sparks rules. So um, let's uh, let's wrap this so up. So do you, bud. Thank you. So we, um, we'll be back hopefully next week. And I don't know what next week's episode is. I think it's something a little different, if I remember mm. right. Is it? Let's just do this right here while we're here on the episode. I gonna, think I'm it's not going to give. It's something we haven't tried before. I think. Ah, I see what it is. Okay, it's going to be fun, and yeah. it's going to be it's going to be one for fans of Cranked and Ranked, not fans of a band, because yeah. it's you're getting a lot of uh, Eddie and old head in uh, old, yeah. old head and young balls on <laughs> in that. on the mic <laughs> on the mic. Yeah. So we'll be back next time. It'll be fun. Young um, or it won't be full motherfucking a phys <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that's that's it. Thank you all very much for listening and or watching. And if you're on YouTube, uh, as usual, put your Rage Against the Machine ranking in the comments. And mm -hmm. as usual, if you act like a damn fool, your comment is just removed. You know what my favorite thing in the world is now? Because I've noticed that the ban whenever, hammer. Poof. Whenever, yeah. Well, when yeah. I don't ban people, but whenever somebody, my favorite thing is that it happened on Led Zeppelin. Some dude took his time to write out this really lengthy thing with paragraphs, and I didn't get through the first paragraph because the dude was talking like an idiot and an asshole. So I literally just deleted it, and I went. How great is that? This dude took all that time to write <laughs> all of this shit, and I just went, Boop, nobody's going to see it. <laughs> Damn, dude. Um, but the, what but sort of the shit was I, it? Was it just... I, well, he... First of all, I think he was referring to... to he, he was acting like he didn't know who we were, even though he apparently had watched the episodes. So like, the blonde guy and the mustache guy, or whatever. Uh, and he kept saying that, like... I didn't know what I was talking about and I was an idiot. And apparently you, he could see in your face that you knew that I was an idiot or something like that. I don't know, but I, that was like in the first paragraph, but I don't care when somebody disagrees with me, but just yeah. his whole form of writing was that 
I'm uppity and I know everything and you guys don't know what you're talking about. And if you, if you come at it that way, your shit just gets removed. Now, yeah. if it's a long ass paragraph about you explaining why you feel differently and you're being respectful, that shit stays up there. I'll give it a heart. Sometimes I might even respond, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just, I love the douchebags that spend so much time and I'm just like, hi, <laughs> you're not staying all night writing that one. <laughs> yeah. You're not, yeah. uh, your, your shit's not going on my channel. Um, and, uh, but yeah, anyway. All right, cool. So don't do that, but do all the other things. Put your rankings and some other shit. Um, and uh, yeah, everybody, everybody, be cool. All right, that's all. That's all. We. That's all I want. Just be cool. All right. Do you do you feel differently? Be cool about it. Mm. All don't right. Be a dick. Uh, that's yeah. Don't be a dick. There you go. Mm. All right. Words to live by and words to uh, say goodbye with because that's a good way to end. So thank you, every everybody, for listening and watching and as usual i'm gonna throw it over to eddie sparks to take us out yeah that's this week that was good bye yeah <laughs>